Let's get more on what all of this means from James J. Carafano, who is a leading expert in national security and foreign policy at the Heritage Foundation. He joins us live from here in Washington. James, really great to have you with us. Uh, the paper concludes that Reuters published in an exclusive report, and I should add that Reuters didn't independently see this paper. They spoke with individuals right. that were familiar with it. So this is something also that TRT World has not been able to confirm as well. But reportedly, the paper concludes that Washington's views on China rise as an economic and national security threat and a challenge to Western democracies. When you look at the rhetoric coming out of the Trump administration on this, is the warnings in this security report that was apparently presented to top Beijing officials, is it unfounded? Well, you have to look at the source of this report. Uh, rather than look at U.S. rhetoric, this is a very conservative, hawkish think tank in the Chinese security apparatus. So these are the most hawkish and demonstrably aggressive views you would expect to see from the Chinese government. So it probably says more about the orientation of the think tank than it actually says about U.S. Uh, which actually through, through the yelling and back and forth have still been, been pretty stable. But here's where I think the report is very perceptive, and I would agree with it. They said this is the most angry that really the world has been at China since Tiananmen Square in 1989. I, I think that's accurate. So tell me a little bit about what's driving the administration's comments. Clearly, there's a, an investigation going on into where exactly the virus originated, but we are also in an election year. So I, I think there's a couple of things at play here. One, of course, is the indisputable facts, which is and, and many countries are legitimately uh, angry at the regime. There, I mean, there were two things with the Chinese did, which I, I think are indisputable. One is they didn't comply with the international health regulations. They delayed reporting. That ate up enormous amount of time that the world could have used. The, pandemic. the other was, which again, I think is indisputable, that they allowed many people, tens of thousands of people to travel from China when they knew that those people might have been infected and the disease was highly contagious and it could be lethal to vulnerable populations. So on the one hand, I think there's something genuinely to be angry about. Um, on the other, the, there's been growing, I think, bipartisan consensus of concern about China. It's destabilizing world for some time now. The, the, this has really exacerbated that. And so it, it, it's inconceivable that you would see from a rhetorical perspective, this administration, uh, in a sense, using kind of not having to, to acknowledge that. I mean, th the American people are angry. And for the administration to try to tampen that down, I politically toned down. So what does this mean when this pandemic is over, James, and that will be after the November election? What does this mean for U.S.-China relations going forward and China's relationship with the rest of the world? Well, I, I think less than people might suspect when they look at the hyper rhetoric. The reality is, is the United States was getting much more confrontational in its relationship with China. It has no interest exacerbating that re relationship. We don't want a conflict. The Chinese don't want a conflict. Not going there. I think that's off the table. Uh, on the other hand, I think a hard decoupling between our countries and our economies, that's off the table. We're going to have this contentious relationship. That's baked in. Uh, I, I don't think that particular direction is going to change. Where this may have shifted the balance is, I really think worldwide, there's more concern about Chinese destabilizing activity. And a lot of people will be, will be much more critical about dealing with the Chinese. So for example, in international organizations, there, I think there's going to be closer scrutiny of the Chinese role uh, in some of the Chinese foreign investments, the foreign direct investments, the lending practices, also in, in, in Chinese disinformation and the, and the political warfare. Uh, but, but I think that's a, that's a building on an existing trend, which would have happened regardless of whether uh, COVID, the COVID-19 uh, outbreak had happened. This does, I think, accelerate that. Um, it's going to make American rhetoric tougher, certainly through the election. But the fundamentals of the nature of the competition between the United States and China, I don't think it's going to change all that much. 
James J. Carafano here in Washington with the Heritage Foundation. We really appreciate your analysis. Thanks for coming on.